The history of kinetic fine art is a theory that I developed. So I devised three categories in the kinetic fine art to, to put all kinetic art into. Mostly to simplify. Okay, so because I want the objective to be that anyone can understand this. So these um, categories are defined by the major technologies that evolved through our, our modern times, which is the machine, light, and the computer. The first one I called machine aesthetic, and this is taken directly from Bauhaus. Bauhaus had a theory of a machine-originated aesthetic. I have to be careful what I say because I have someone here who knows a lot about Bauhaus who taught me. But, uh, but anyway, um, the, it, it was a lot more than that, but that's what I'm focused in on because I'm focused in on kinetic art. And um, so I took the uh, machine-originated aesthetic term used by the Bauhaus and the theory, that was the name of the theory that they used, and just called it machine aesthetic. And the reasoning I use for that uh, is that the constructivists uh, like uh, Nam Gabo started uh, with as a constructivist and was hired by Bauhaus as an instructor. And um, while he was at the Bauhaus, he was influenced by the theories of the artists there at the Bauhaus started changing that theory to mean more by adding actual motors to their sculpture. And it, a lot of the art back then, like uh, <clears throat> Mahali Nash's uh, light machine, was actually called machine art back then. So machine aesthetic uh, fits in to the time, the term. And um, Frank Popper, one of the noted writers for kinetic art and technology art, dates 1920 as the beginning of kinetic art, so that's the date I use for the machine aesthetic. Machine aesthetic lasted for quite a long time, even though light was around and was being used in kinetic art, but it wasn't prominent. The uh, machine aesthetic was more artists were working on mobiles and uh, actual uh, mechanized sculpture than they were artists working on light, with light at that time. Kinetic light I'm talking about, not just static light. Light aesthetic actually started with Frank Molina. Frank Molina is my favorite artist. Uh, he's a kinetic painter, just like me, only did the same type of painting. He did hand painting, and he did uh, he used the technology of his time and incorporated the two. And I'm going to get more into that later as we go along. Computer aesthetic grew out of light art, as light art light aesthetic. Um, excuse me. I use I make that mistake a lot. Light art. Light art actually isn't kinetic art. Okay, some of it isn't, and I'll get into that a little bit more. And of course, this is my theory. And uh, so light aesthetic, as it grew out of machine aesthetic in 1956, uh, computer aesthetic grew out of light aesthetic. And I changed that date several times. I just changed it again today. So I choose 1966 now as the beginning of computer aesthetic. And I choose. Um, Nam Jun Pak as, uh, as starting that impetus of uh, computer aesthetic. What I call computer aesthetic is, my definition is, the use of electronics or a microchip or mathematical prop programming or the combination of those to control the effects of light. Once light aesthetic went away from just motion and the artist started to control it with electronics, 
and mathematical programming, it crossed over into computer aesthetic. And I'm going to explain more about that too because there's a lot of confusion in all these areas. Uh, let me go to the next slide. So each one of these um, categories has an incubation period. For instance, uh, machine aesthetic, it wasn't called machine aesthetic or kinetic art wasn't around, but it was actually um, being used for a very long time. I found, at first I found out that uh, ancient Greece had invented the hydro clock, but just recently I found out that some people say that Arabs invented the hydro clock. I'm not going to get into controversy, I'm just going to say that the hydro clock could be an early incubation period for what actually eventually developed in the kinetic arts. Constructivism is actually the real incubation period for the kinetic arts, or as I call it, kinetic fine art. And um, through constructivism and the implied motion grew actual motion and mechanized sculpture. Mechanized sculpture is actually what started the movement. Although mobiles have been around for a long time before that, they didn't actually start the movement. It was when the mechanized sculpture was uh, uh, developed by Mahal Nash. I was taught how to say that properly. <clears throat> that, uh, that the uh, mechanized sculpture was uh, very influential in starting the kinetic arts along with all the other people who were working with implied art and the mobiles like Al Alexander Calder and uh, they all contributed to the beginning of um, machine aesthetic as I call it. But the constructivists where I give credit and the Bauhaus the Bauhaus is actually, I give them the credit for, because they were an institution. And um, with, their, um, they, with their influence and them working on mechanized sculpture is what, what really gave the impetus to uh, kinetic arts or kinetic fine art. And I like to... Um, just point out briefly that Nam Gabo in 1920, while he was working for Bauhaus, kinetic some, uh, made some kinetic sculptures. <clears throat> Excuse me. And that was the period when he was converting from, uh, actually, he always stayed with implied art, uh, implied motion, but he was actually experimenting with mechanized motion around this time. Mahali Nash was experimenting with his space segments in 1923. But what he's really known for is his light machine. Now, he called it something else, but translated, it's a light machine. Uh, this mechanized sculpture that you see on the screen, as you see, has light incorporated into it. But let's remember that uh, the machine is what the focus of the art form was and um, light was only part of that focus. It wasn't the main focus. So what you have here is a uh, mechanic, there's a motor attached to this uh, sculpture and uh, it turns and then reflects the light that's in there in the sculpture onto the wall and then the shadows move. And that's really uh, when kinetic uh, or uh, machine aesthetic took off big time. This is one of Nam Galbo's pieces of implied art when he was, uh, this is originally done in 1916, but this is a uh, duplicate of it uh, that was done in 1950. But it's an exact duplicate of what he did in 1916. And, um, to give you an example of implied art when he was in during his constructivist uh, period. 
This is another piece of Nam Gabo's uh, implied motion through not only the shape of the art form, the sculpture, but through the reflective properties of the materials used. And you see there's two layers of plastic, the inner plastic. As the viewer moves around viewing the uh, sculpture, there is an, uh, an amplification of light and motion when they overlap each other. Right now you see it in the picture, they're not overlapping. Okay, so light aesthetic also had an incubation period and uh, the color organ may have been the beginnings of the incubation period. Thomas Wilfred, who was a pioneer in kinetic painting, was also the um, inventor of kinetic painting and he, I call this uh, the beginning of the incubation period, the actual beginning of the incubation period for light aesthetic because light aesthetic really didn't take off. He was, he was by himself. I mean, basically he was a, one of the only people that I've ever heard of doing this. And he made light boxes back then and on those uh, translucent material on the light box he would paint on that. But uh, kinetic art hasn't even been started yet at that point. So he was way ahead of his time. He was way before machine aesthetic or light aesthetic. And the machine aesthetic is also the incubation period for light aesthetic. It grew out of it and I should have also added the Bauhaus. There's an incubation period for it. Now here's some of the um, controversy that goes into what I see as controversy into kinetic art. Let's see if I can say his name right. Guglio Cuis was a, in my opinion, a great kinetic artist. But he made the first uh, recognized art piece using neon. This, he was recognized as the first design for neon. By, he was in um, Frank Popper's uh, books that I actually took that. And um, there's a common mistake. Technology art is commonly mixed with kinetic art. When people are talking about technology art, they always put in kinetic art. And it sounds like to the layperson who isn't informed that neon is kinetic art. Light art, and this is light art. It's not light aesthetic. He, I looked and looked and looked and I've never seen him write or imply any motion, any articulated motion to his neon light. He could have, as you can see there are shadows, he could have said that's a virtual motion. But never, uh, if I find any of that writing then I'll have to change this to kinetic art. But he never, the artist never implied any motion. That was presented as a design of light art. Who really started light aesthetic was Frank Molina with his Lumidine system in 1956. This is an example of his Lumidine system. He's, in my opinion, the greatest all-time kinetic artist, kinetic painter, because I, he's my favorite, so I'm, I'm biased in that way. So anyway, um, computer aesthetic also had an incubation period. When Frank Molina was developing his uh, Lumidine system, unwittingly, he didn't know it, but by his use of electronics to control the motors and the light patterns in his Lumidine system, he was actually starting the incubation period for computer aesthetic. As far as I'm concerned, uh, I just call it the incubation period because he was by himself at this point. When a lot of people joined in, then it turns into an actual move, movement in the arts. So later on, 
other people used electronics, but at that time, later on, electronics were used for computers. Before the microchip, before the transistor, before uh, there was the uh, tube and electronics. So that, that use of um, electronics and mathematical programming or the microchip or, or in any combination of that constitutes a controlling of the light patterns, which um, is a term that's used in art, kinetic art, is cybernetics. That's when, uh, when cybernetics came into kinetic arts or kinetic fine art is what I call the beginning of computer aesthetic. Before that, it was just light aesthetic. So light aesthetic had a short life, short and brilliant life, even though it is all the way through the, you see it in machine art and in computer aesthetic. So one of, some of the examples that I like to show of computer aesthetic is uh, Nam Jean Pak, uh, video synthesizer. He actually built some video, um, he was a video artist uh, long uh, before that, but uh, I, th I believe his video synthesizer is uh, when the computer aesthetic actually started. Schofer did his light tower, cybernetic light tower, and Kowalski. I'm going to show you examples of these. This is an example of the video synthesizer. He considered himself a video installation artist. This being his first work, uh, or one of his first works, or actually his first video synthesizer, but um, it wasn't an, actually an installation at this point. And he had help doing it. He had a partner. He had a, a friend making his synthesizer. This is an example of an installation. Each one of these little squares and larger squares on this uh, installation here is an actual monitor. And that was put together, and that's an, a very huge installation. Okay, now um, this is Schofer's light tower, and you can see this is also huge. There's a road down there below it. And Kowalski's uh, field of interaction, I, I like to use Kowalski the most, mostly because I like these uh, patterns of light that are on, in this uh, environmental uh, installation that he built. As the viewer moves through the installation, they set off sensors and different light patterns show up on the wall. And that's my presentation of Kinetic Fine Art.